For 15 years, I've been trying to unravel the secrets of archaeology. I've searched all over the Midwest and Mid-Atlantic looking for archaeology. I don't remember this from last time. Now, I've put together a crack team of archaeology investigators. And we're going to take you with us as we explore further to find The Secrets of Archaeology. The 1900s saw the professionalization of the field of archaeology. It included development of a series of anthropological and archaeological theories that still influence the field today. How do we see the changes in archaeology from the 1800s to the 1900s? Mainly we see this change in the way the sites and artifacts are treated. Contrary to the original antiquarians of the early 1800s, archaeology started to develop better ways to preserve sites and handle artifacts. These antiquarians ignited the Victorian love of history, but damaged a good deal of ancient sites in the process. Could archaeology develop enough as a field to protect future investigations? The archaeological record isn't what some people think. There are those who believe that archaeology holds mysteries and secrets to a suppressed past. Could alternative archaeology be uncovering these curiosities? Or can science and archaeology explain the seemingly unexplainable? We've made it our mission to look into the claims of alternative archaeology and evaluate the evidence they present. We'll compare it to actual scientific archaeology and see which can give us a more realistic interpretation of the past. I'm professional archaeologist Sarah Head, and this is Forensic Cat Inspector Bragnir Thrandrill. We're going to put alternative archaeology under our lens and see how it holds up to reality. Archaeological Fantasies presents Curious Archaeology. Originally, the snatch and grab antiquarians of the early 1800s would go into foreign, often colonized countries and bring back anything that seemed of value or was impressive. They had little or no care for the overall structure of a site and they were known for creating extravagant claims and tales to thrill their friends and patrons back home. Early archaeological theory revolved around ethnocentrism and exoticism. Early explorers and antiquarians liked to regale their fans with stories of savages and pagans that they encountered on their travels. Most often these stories ended with said pagans and savages converting to Christianity at the hands of said explorer. Archaeology was likewise used as a way to bolster biblical truth, and it looked for evidence of biblical catastrophes like the Great Flood. One of the first early assumptions of archaeology was that the Bible was indeed fact and that all archaeology should reflect the historicity of the Bible. A prime example of this is the now debunked mound builder myth. When white settlers first started to come into the Americas, they couldn't help but notice the massive and impressive earthworks that dotted the land. Unwilling to believe that the indigenous tribes of Native Americans could have built these, despite direct testimony at some points and witnessing the creation and maintenance of these mounds. Settlers began to create their own stories that included lost tribes of Israel, Vikings, Celts, and even giants. The publication of Darwin's On the Origin of Species in 1859 changed a number of fields, including archaeology. 
The idea that sites and artifacts could be connected to non-biblical sources was an idea that had been floating around for a while. But with Darwin's new theory out in the public eye, now their ideas had teeth. Ah, yes. Good old Darwin. Darwin never got anything wrong. However, over time, and with the archaeological research of archaeologists like Alice Fletcher, Zella Natal, and Frederick Ward Putnam, and along with the support of institutions like the Smithsonian and the Peabody Museum, doubts about these theories continued to grow. Finally, by the late 1870s, a researcher by the name of Cyrus Thomas, who was funded by the Smithsonian Institution, was able to definitively put out a report that said that there was no discernible physical difference between the people who built the mounds and modern Native Americans. But why did it take so long for European Americans to recognize the work of Native Americans? There are many unsavory reasons that are mostly backed by poor science and bad archaeological methods. Systematic archaeology and the understanding and application of stratigraphy, along with the application of chronological analysis, help dispel offensive and inaccurate theories about the origin of the mounds and gave archaeologists a fuller picture of the past. Thankfully, we've eliminated all of those, and archaeology is now a purely science-driven field. Well, I mean, not really. Archaeology still has a lot of issues it's trying to work through, not the least of which is its own origins. What we can say is archaeologists today are aware of them and are actively working to overcome them. Developing our methodology and techniques has gone a long way, as has becoming aware of our biases. But is that really enough? Techniques alone were not enough. Into every scientific field, a little theory must fall.